Welcome to the High Ground Podcast, I'm Stevie W. And Callum. And this is part two of Bruce Lee, the man, the myth, the legend. And, okay, we're starting now with the, the one film which is I don't define as a Bruce Lee film, this is why we're not including it in part one, which is, which is Game of Death. Yeah. It's no, a weird one, isn't it? <laughs> I... I'm gonna be honest with you. I never watched. I, I'd, I'd seen, War Warriors Journey documentary, and I, I was well aware of Game of Death, but it never really appealed to me. No, it's it's a strange sort of convergence, if you like. I mean, there's a there's a sort of mythical cut of it out there where there's more footage of Bruce being in it, but. I don't hold much hope of that being true, to be honest. I think it's just... It's, it's strange, isn't it? It's just like a cobbled together mess, really, isn't it? Yeah, from, from what I can make out, all the uh, the Bruce Lee that was actually, you know, that they found, because in the 90s they found the uh, footage and his notes, yeah. which were lost, and they were able to cobble together for the... Uh, and I found, it, I, I know it's, I, you can get it somewhere else, but I, I was only able to find it on YouTube. Bruce Lee, A Warrior's Journey. And it yeah. actually has the, they, they using his notes, uh, they were able to cobble together the like, last 20 minutes or so. They, of, of, it was all the uh, hours they had, because they found out a lot of his material that he had was unusable. Because, you know, it was this, just constant takes, because he was a perfectionist. So yeah. all the hours they had. They That's were... why I don't really hold out much hope for this, for there being like a a better cut of it. You know, it's it's like you said about the notes. Uh, that's what I was going to say actually. There's then um, did diagrams of the structure of the each floor that he, who he's going to fight on each floor, wasn't there in yeah. the dojo? I mean, it's almost like um, you know, like the movie version of Dread, where there's a floor with one obstacle, another floor with an obstacle, you know, till you reach the top. But I thought like that would have been a really cool film. Yeah, it was over each floor, you know, it was it was representing, you know, a, a different challenge. And it was all about philosophy. Yeah. So that's where it was. And this is, I mean, Bruce Lee, you know, writer, director, he was literally, he was controlling the whole thing. He, he was right down to like casting and everything. And they stopped production so that he could go and do his Hollywood picture. And yeah. he, you know, once he'd finished Enter the Dragon, he actually wrote in his diary, uh, apparently the last words, I think it was in September, he, he wrote uh, he wrote uh, Game of Death, where he was going to start the day, it's like, I think like 20th of September or something, where he was supposed to resume work on the movie. Oh, right, okay. So, you know, we of course, which would have been uh, after everything had, you know, after he'd done promotional work and all, and the release of Enter the Dragon, but... He actually had the plan for him to actually go back to and complete Game of Death. So it's like a concurrent production yeah, that they, they stopped so he could do Enter the Dragon. Yeah, because they, you know, he, he was becoming big and you know, getting making the Hollywood picture. You know, to get more funny. I mean, this this he got his mates in Kareem Abdul Jabbar, who's one of his uh, one of his students, and all the people who are in the film. You know. Uh, the ones at the end, the ones that would really, really couldn't get to come back. Yeah. But when, because he was doing this since, well, it'd be 72, 73 when he was working on it. And Game of Death came out in 78. So, uh, and that's made up mainly of archive footage. Yeah. And, you know, stuff made, I mean, the, the, the film that they're making when, I mean, if you don't want to watch the film, because, you know, uh, uh, Bruce Lee fakes his death and he comes back so it's he, you know and the, the, it's kind of exploitative that they actually use sequences from Bruce Lee's real funeral in, yeah I was going to say movie. that actually I, I was going to bring that up earlier and then I thought, I thought probably better for this section yeah I thought that was a weird a bit uncomfortable really isn't it yeah there's there's and they go into the, the sequence where he was uh, where he get the character gets shot you know and it was during the making of the ending of fist of fury so that they can use fits of fist of fury you they've literally threw in like uh shot scenes from 
uh, way of the dragon just so that they can see that they've got to, uh, oh, so, sorry, they've got to, uh, thingy in it, uh, Chuck Norris, sorry, Chuck Norris. Oh, yeah. So they, they literally thrown everybody in that they just to, just to say, and, uh, and there's something I was watching when I was watching this morning. It sums this film up perfectly uh, from a documentary called Iron Fists and Kung Fu Kicks. Uh, someone in, in the documentary says it's like Plan 9 from out of, Plan 9 from Outer Space. You've got the whole Bela Lugosi thing where you have a cardboard cut out of his face. You have... Oh, so bad. Yeah. Isn't it on the mirror? Yeah. And yeah, it's so bad. I, it, I think I actually wet myself laughing when yeah. I first saw that. I had to force the... <laughs> Uh, and the bits where he goes to where you know you see the close up of Bruce Lee's and you and you can see wow he's, it's definitely not the same shot there's the there's the long shot and the other shots and the guy in masks is supposed to be him and you've got uh, who's character who's the actor that plays him you've got uh, you got the you got the actor who's uh, playing him it's it's, it's just it's, it's a I thought. Uh, you got uh, yeah, sorry, Tae Jung Kim as as uh, uh, as Billy Lowe. and I, it's like I found it very disrespectful at times. Yeah, I think they should have just not made it or just released the fight footage by itself. Because I mean, the, he has enough fans that they would just love to watch him doing anything. Yeah, I mean, I'd just watch him doing the constant takes. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> I, I, you don't have to make a. I mean, they're in a game of death too, as well. And it's just unbelievable. The amount of films that are actually, you know, that are actually made after his death with lookalikes with the names of like Bruce Lee, L E, or Bruce Lai, or Bruce Tai. The amount. Of, this is again. This is all coming from Iron Fist and Kung Fu Kicks, and it's. It's unbelievable if they've got they if they find a bit of uh, Bruce Lee footage they could just put his name above the title. So yeah. Bruce Lee in sixty seconds of Bruce Lee in a film that's yeah <laughs> called together. So we've got Bruce Lee introducing again Plan Nine from Outer Space with uh, Bela Lugosi. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, and they got uh, the music is done by John Barry. And oh, the well, I forgot there's the Bond yeah. connection again. And uh, the thing that really got me was the actual ending of of, uh, of the movie, where you've got all these clips of Bruce Lee fighting and doing everything, and it's all done out to a song, that the, and the way it's all done is like Bruce Lee's done like a James Bond movie. It felt like the credits to James Bond, it did. High production in a shite film. I'm sorry, I just... Yeah, it's not. It's not even really a film, actually, no. is it? It's, I don't know. It's it's like, it's a shame that we got that as the last product, quote unquote. Yeah, I mean the the. I know I said I I watched that. And that was, this is the first time I'd watched uh, I watched Game of Death again because I just didn't really want to watch a film for seven minutes worth of Bruce Lee and no. and. I came out of it going, you know, it wasn't a terrible film, but it it just, if I had to choose between that and, like I said, Plan 9, I would have been choosing Plan 9, but yeah. it's, yeah, I, I, I didn't like it at all, but the, the, the edited together uh, footage on the Bruce Lee, A Warriors, A Warriors Journey documentary, that showed the potential it really it really had and if they could have just oh they these notes were lost they might have actually been lost when they cobbled together with all the game of death i can't don't quote me on that but finding all that footage in the 90s and, and piecing it together based upon his notes to get an idea of what it could have been is really sad but it is i mean it's it's one of those productions, isn't it, where the production's more interesting than the film? Yeah. Like, you'd love to have been a fly on the wall, wouldn't you, when they made the decisions? I'd be like, going, no, no. But he was... Yeah. He was big money, he was. Yeah. And anything that had his name on it, nobody'd ever seen, you know. It's like, it'd be like... 
if it's a film we really, you know, if a film that we would really like, and find out there's an extra cut, a different cut of it with an extra seven minutes, go and see it at the cinema. You don't have to go to the cinema to see it. Yeah. Come on, we did it for we did it for a unicorn sequence in the nineties for Blade Runner. It's all right. They just take the ending off and they put a unicorn in it. Yes, someone got cinema and watched Blade Runner because it got a unicorn sequence in it. And then they recut it again and released it in cinemas. And I'll happily go. Because they know that Bruce Lee, especially during that period, where to quote the song Everybody Was Kung Fu Fighting, and yeah. getting Bruce Lee's name with across the title, even in a film as bad as that. He was super marketable, wasn't he? Yeah. Still is now. If they found a uh, film in a vault somewhere and they could bring, they get out and have Bruce Lee on it, people would buy it. And so, oh, of course, Bruce yeah. Lee. I mean, he's like the Arnie of the 70s, really, yeah. isn't he? Or his legacy, you could also argue, is the James Dean. Hello? Yeah, sorry, no, I, I, he's, he's like the Arnie of the 70s, yeah. really, isn't he? Yeah. But I mean, that would have been a great film to see, wouldn't it, Arnie? Yeah. With Bruce Lee. Oh, yeah, sorry, you just went, uh, you, you just lost connection there, so here's, uh, oh, okay. it, it just, it, it did it, so yeah. The wonders of doing it during lockdown. Yeah, yeah, I love that, I love doing this during lockdown, it's kind of, yeah, that was sarcasm, that was, but... Yeah, lockdown is means that we are. If you want to why varying, uh, varying quality and sound is, is we are doing this remotely. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I really, I really didn't. Want, I, I, uh, it's. I mean, the, the the highlight of me was seeing Colin Camp, who was in Police Academy Two, and Die Hard with a Vengeance. All right, who you know, the, you know the girl in it, the girl in it. She's one of the. She was in Die Hard with a Vengeance uh, as you ever seen uh, have you ever seen Police Academy? <laughs> yeah, years ago. She was uh Tackleberry's uh Oh uh, yeah, wife. yeah, I know you mean. And yeah, she's, yeah. She's Connie Kowalski in Die Hard with a Vengeance. Yeah. So so that it was it was it was cool seeing a young uh, Colin Camp. But yeah. But other than that, it was like I, I, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad I watched it, so I've watched it, but I really did enjoy Bruce Lee and Warrior's Journey. Yeah, it's a fantastic documentary, isn't it? I yeah. think, um, I remember seeing that on the, there was like a DVD box set called The Legacy Box Set or something like that, and they had a extra disc and that's what was on it. It was a really good documentary actually, isn't it? Oh, it's brilliant. I mean, I was like, I mean, it was enjoyable. And, I mean, without you, know, sometimes you just wanted to get to the bit why you paid for it or why you watching the documentary. When they say it features this, but you, you you're enjoying you're enjoying the the story behind it, so that when it does get to the ending, where you're gonna watch the footage, the new the spliced together footage, it's like oh, that's fantastic. But it does leave yeah. you wanting more. One thing that uh, which we have, I have a couple of people haven't touched on is. The yellow truck, the yellow uh, jump, the yellow tracksuit that he's wearing. Yeah, which is, oh, I don't know how many times that's been referenced, and it's not even, you know, like most pictures you see of him, he's in that tracksuit, isn't he? And yeah, it's in the film that nobody really knows about. If you're talking about Bruce. Lee. Yeah, I mean, if Kill Bill's got a been, you know, the, the motorcycle suit she has on and. Yeah, you know, it's been done in video games. They take like there's a character in a fighting game called Tech and yeah. Martial Law, and it's just Bruce Lee. Like it's literally Bruce Lee. Yeah. And there's so many. Oh, it's, it's just been used so many times, isn't it? Oh yeah. And uh, so you know, so you, you've got to I mean going back to uh, you know, death itself is is the whole you know the stuff that's not Bruce Lee where you sat guy on the bike in the yellow jumpsuit so that they can actually oh. but that's like what the bride on uh, in Kill Bill yeah I was gonna say Tarantino is probably most likely a definite fan of Bruce Lee isn't he so yeah well, you know, there is something I do want to touch on uh, towards the end but yeah the, the, that whole that whole, the whole yeah it's, a, it's such an iconic look and when it comes from like cities the people don't really know him for but apparently, uh, the 
the yellow jumpsuit represents, and you know, he has no affiliation to one single martial arts. Okay. And that's, that was in the documentary. Um, I also learned this is from the Warriors Journey that Jeet Kune Do means way of the intersecting fist. Yeah. And yeah, so so that's my big knowledge from that. But you know, I mean, because it's a Warriors Journey is essentially dealing with game of death, and the one thing I actually really took out of it was because he directed and he shot the the you know the the, the uh, end sequence, which you know, which was what we have, is that if you know, had he lived, he would have been. Uh, he, I reckon he, he would have gone into directing. I think that's oh, definitely, worth, yeah. And I think he would have been brilliant because he had the eye for it. He did. So it's it is such a shame. I mean, the way he positioned the cameras, he told he was telling people where to stand so that they get the best shot from him. And that you know that's why there's so many of these hours of footage they can only crop into twenty minutes. Yeah, but it's it's. It, is I mean he did it with game of, like uh with uh, way of the dragon, so it would have been I think that game of death could have been possibly one of the ultimate action martial arts films you know had he, we'd seen his vision. Yeah, oh, def I mean even the fighting footage we've got is great. So I'd love to have seen the whole film. Like, it's just one of those mythical films you'll never see, isn't it? Yeah. And it's not like it's one that there's like with, say, uh, Superman Two or Blade Runner, where there are there is the footage where they can piece together ninety percent of a film that you could release. All of what they've got is what we have in that documentary, which is yeah, which is such a such a shame. Yeah, it's criminal. Yeah, another thing which I, I completely forgot. You know, when I was mentioned about you know. Uh, the, when we're talking about, uh, we touched on Green Hornet. And yeah. When I was watching it, is, I mean, it's a little segue into into uh, Kill Bill. Is that the music that the Green Hornet's theme is the music that uh, when the bride's going to Japan and you have got the music which she goes onto the bike is the Green Hornet. Oh theme. yeah. And I was like watching. I was like, so I had the trip of watching Green Hornet. And the theme comes on. I had to get Kill Bill out and just check it out if I was right. So it is. How Quentin Tarantino was so influenced, especially with Kill Bill and Volume Two, by by uh, Bruce Lee. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's undeniable, isn't it? When you watch something like Kill Bill, I mean, it's a pastiche homage to all that seventies kung fu stuff, isn't it? And samurai movies and stuff that all came out at the same time. So, I mean, there's no way you could ever watch Tarantino and not know you've been influenced by that. Oh, yeah. Which leads us to a little bit of controversy here. Okay. Once upon a time in Hollywood. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know, I know we are gonna we're gonna touch on some of these other stuff, but uh, now that we're, we're, we're discussing Tarantino, uh, once upon a time in Hollywood, uh, the Lee family see what the interpretation as being disrespectful to him. What do you think? I don't think that's all. I think Bruce would have left. I think it's it's just it was so great seeing it because you're thinking and the guy that plays Bruce Lee, I don't know where they got him, but he's absolutely stunning like it looks exactly like him and sounds like him. But I think it is the sort of humour that Bruce Lee would probably come up with anyway, isn't it? Like it, it's just I laugh at every time I watch it. I, I don't think it's disrespectful at all. I think it's 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 respectful in, in the spirit of Bruce Lee, I think. I, I, for me, yes, uh, that whole sequence with, uh, with Bruce Lee and uh, Brad Pitt it's, and, of course, Zoe Bell and... And, uh, and Randy. Yeah. <laughs> those, oh, seriously, that whole sequence, just with those four, you know, is Kurt Russell, is he's, uh, he's, you know, that, that is to me is my favourite scene in the whole movie, is, and, uh, but, I, 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 it's a heightened reality, yeah, and if you've not seen Kill, if you've not seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, just watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, 
But the whole thing about once upon a time in Hollywood, they all lived happily ever after. It's a different reality and it's not meant to be taken seriously. So I, th I agree. I think Bruce Lee would have loved it because it's not a caricature of Bruce Lee. This is Bruce Lee as character, as a character. What people's yeah. perceptions are. Everybody, if you know what Bruce Lee was li uh, like and what was Bruce Lee was about, you would know that this is not meant to be the real Bruce Lee. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think they got a bit sort of, they just didn't get it really, did they, the no, family? No, completely. I, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's such a shame because it's such a fun sequence, it is like, it's my favourite sequence in the film, especially when, uh, you know, they say like, Bruce never would have challenged him or, or Bruce never would have done that, but, and the bit where, it, and, and then you've got guy, a stuntman could not beat Bruce Lee in a fight. So you're telling me that a fictional character could not beat a real character. They, they, they argue, there's no argument there because Cliff is a fictional character. Something yeah. that never happened, never will happen because he was a fictional character in a film playing a fictionalised version of Bruce Lee, which was done... Yeah. He goes, he goes, well, that dent in the car says otherwise. Yeah, I mean, I think Bruce would have thought that was funny. Yeah. And I think he would have played along. Like, I think he would have laughed. Definitely. I, I just, I don't see where, how it's even remotely offensive, really. No, but the, uh, the, uh, the only way I can think of it is that they think that someone's going to take it seriously and think that's what he was like. But if you're yeah. watching a Tarantino film, who... You, you've got some level of cinematic knowledge. You, if you go into any of these Tarantino's later films that go on for hours and hours, you're not going to be sitting there watching something like that without going... If you're, if you're a standard cinema goer that likes, you know, cinema with a beginning, middle and end, then you're not going to be sitting there for, for two and a half hours watching a film like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood going, what the f*** is going on? Yeah, you'd have tuned out before that scene even came on. You 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 have a knowledge of cinema to be watching the film. So I, I completely agree with you. I do. But I just think I mean Tarantino. So you know you can tell he's still in. He's a film fan as well as a a director. So it's always been his first love. So why would he? mock anything to to do with his great love like and bruce lee's obviously something he really loved as well so i just don't see what like we like you say obviously well like, they're probably scared people think that's what he was like but i think he might have been a bit like that you know like mm. he apparently did have a good sense of humor and was a great guy to know so I, I don't imagine him being offended by something like that i do completely agree with you i mean the film is in itself is a love letter to hollywood yeah I, it's a fairy tale, wasn't it? Yeah. I was on the edge of my seat right to the end of the film because I because I thought the Sharon Tate thing, because I'd be going into it, I knew Sharon Tate was in it. And then when you yeah. see the pregnant Sharon Tate, I'm literally, I'm on the edge of my seat the entire film thinking I know how this film's going to end. So I'm not enjoying it the first time I'm watching it that much because I'm waiting for something gruesome to happen. And then when the ending happens, I'm like, Wow, I literally, it's one of the times where I've sat through a film and thought I have to, I have to see this again straight afterwards, even though it's a long film. And it's, when you watch it a second time and get the complete joke, it's, yeah. it's wow. I mean, I, I, like I said, I love that scene for, essentially for Zoe Bell. I think Zoe Bell is absolutely fantastic in that scene. But, yeah. Uh, and, and, and having her, her, her being the boss, the real boss of the, of the, Three men, one woman. She's the one that's in charge, and it's just brilliant. And I, yeah, I like it. I agree. I think Bruce Lee would have seen the funny side, and that's not, would have. that's no disrespect to Shannon Lee if we're lucky enough to have you listening in. And, yeah. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, outside of the films, I mean, I think you know because the amount of books, I mean, that have been written and that have used all his his. Uh, his material that he wrote because he he wrote a lot and his yeah and his he had students that passed on his teaching and he transcends just cinema 
Yeah, I mean, some of his students were also famous actors as well, weren't they? I mean, yeah. you've got is it George Lazenby and Steve McQueen. James Coburn? James Coburn, yeah. I mean, he was a well-loved guy anyway. So, yeah, I mean, he, he, even in the short, short time he's with us, he wrote a lot, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, when he was out of action, he was, with his, with his back, he was still writing. And, yeah. And formulating stuff, because he could not stay still. And, and it, it's a good way to be. You keep keep moving keep and it's and he gave us so much in so little time i mean i even have a i have a bruce lee hook like i said i bought it in the early 2000s during like i said we, we, we said in the first podcast how things do oh. seem to go uh you know go in circles where i think we're doing another martial arts renaissance yeah i mean what with cobra kai and stuff like that yeah yeah definitely i yeah, I've never read any of his books, but I, I've always wanted to. But I mean, I, there was a—I I mean, you always go through that phase of watching as much as you can about him, just so you know, because yeah. we didn't have him for that long. Yeah. All you have got are documentaries and the four films in four, five-ish. Four, four, four and a half. Four, <laughs> yeah, four, four. and any time that they dig, they're able to dig up the old footage from when he was a child actor. And of course, yeah. you've got the uh, Green Hornet, but uh, it's you know. He'll never grow old. He'll never be more than and he, you know, the the little body worth work. You know, it's it's good that you know you can still he he inspires rather than being one of these that can say, well, he was good when he started his career. I mean, yeah, he's. I mean, not so much Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan still churns them out, but he's more famous than that for the stuff that he did when he was younger. Uh, You've got Jet Li, you know, of course, they're getting a Jet Li and, you know, he's getting older, but he's still known for more of his early work. Steven Seagal still know, was known for about five minutes. And <laughs> the, it's, the, you know, you'll, you'll never hear someone, I mean, you might hear some people say, oh, oh, it was Van Damme who inspired me. But then again, Van Damme would always go and the likes of Cynthia Rothrock and Steven Seagal and, you know, all those ones always do go straight back to Bruce Lee. No matter who you discover to go to the martial arts, they'll have been taught by, they will have been discovered by someone who discovered, and you know, keep going back and back, and it will always go back to Bruce Lee. Especially yeah. in Western culture, it, with, with the genres, it does go back more than anyone to Bruce Lee. And that will be always his legacy that modern day martial arts does go back to Bruce Lee. And, you know, there's a lot of people saying about, you know, mixed martial arts, what it is now. That he was one of the originators, how you know, constantly evolving rather than why if you fight karate or kung fu or judo, you know, rather than being rigid, it's you know, if someone does this to you, you just go rather than saying you have to counteract it with counter it with this move. In a real fight, you would go with whatever's which is the whole mixed martial arts thing, yeah, which is what Jeet Kundo was promoting. Yeah, like the fluidity of yeah. martial arts. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it's it's a shame as well that you know Brandon suffered the same fate, didn't he? I mean, he was probably the closest we were going to get to Bruce being. He was. He see. He always seemed like Bruce to me. Like for the little time he was there as well. You know, and I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, until you know, I discovered Bruce Layton. I. I always thought that with Brandon, because I, I, I was gutted when I was literally shocked when, when Brandon Lee passed away, because I, I saw yeah. showdown in Tokyo, Tokyo. When I saw showdown in Little Tokyo, it was one of those moments where he had the look, he had the talent. I thought he's going to be huge. I, as soon as I saw showdown in Little Tokyo, I thought. He's going to be huge. He's not going to be a big martial arts star. He's going to transcend. He's going to be a star. It wasn't going to be, he's going to be uh, an Asian American star. He, Brandon Lee, was going to be the next big thing in my eyes. I thought that as soon as I saw Showdown in the early 90s. Like, that's it. Brandon Lee is going to be huge. And when he, when he, uh, had the accident on the crow, I was, I was, I was, I was literally shocked because, you know, it's sort of like, the one that I was championing and 
I mean, that's why I'm starting. I know I'm going to be watching the next few days. I've not seen The Crow since I saw it at the cinema because it upset me that much. But he was. Oh, Brandon Lee was just brilliant. That's... I think it, it, the charisma, though, as well, isn't it? Like, it, it was like watching Bruce again. That's what I was. I mean, I sort of came to Brandon Lee afterwards because obviously, like, I didn't really know that much about him when I was younger. Um, but yeah, when you, I mean, you go back and you watch his action films and they're like, everything that's great about the 80s action sort of into the 90s, weren't they? So I would totally agree with the fact that he was probably going to be a great action star. Uh, and I like that little, I just find it, you know, it wasn't uh, until years later, he plays a Japanese American when he's really Chinese American in, Ch yeah. in Shodan in Little Tokyo with, of course, Dolph Lundgren, who still looks good for his age. Now he was it does, yeah, yeah. and it's like that was the selling point for me for Showdown originally was was it's Dolph Lundgren, it's like oh, Dolph yeah. Lundgren and, and Bruce Lee's sons. And it was like, was like yeah, and it was good. It it is just the shame. I mean, it's the, the sad thing is, and this is going back to Game of Death now, is that in Game of Death they wrote a story where Bruce Lee fakes his own death by getting shot on a film set. Brandon Lee gets yeah. shot on a film set, which leads to all these series of A Curse of the Dragon or, uh, you know, or it was one of the Mafia. Or, and oh, so the Triads, yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, it was an accident on a film set. But then people like to, I mean, the, the with Bruce Lee, it was, well, I have to read it down. Bruce Lee was death by missing, uh, on boxes, it was death by misadventure, or death by misadventure, a, cere a cerebral edema, brain swelling. This is Bruce, because he had from a, because he had a, he was admitted to hospital weeks before with a, because he uh, had an allergy, an allergy to some ha hashish. Oh, okay. Well, you know, and you, there's other things like, like a pharmaceutical drug allergy, and then there's you don't like said the Chinese, you got the triads, the, Chinese, the mafia, and it, but. You know, it was Death by Misadventure, which wasn't registered that, if the documentary I was watching is right. Because there's so much out there about his, his death, he's trying to sift through what, is, what isn't what is true. Yeah, I didn't he, uh, to Casper, didn't he? Wasn't yeah, that what, that's an allergic what I, reaction or something? That's what I heard. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've heard like all the stories where, you know, the, the Mafia planted the, the drug on him to kill him, and you know, it was just, I don't know, it was just... I think it's just silly, isn't it? People like to look for things. They that aren't there. Yeah. It's like Elvis yeah. Presley still being alive. Yeah, and Area 51 and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's... And, of course, you've got the, the Princess Diana stuff in the UK. Yeah. Everybody, you know... Which can't be... Which can't be nice for the family that when they hear all this crap after after they died you know it, it's it keeps bringing it up it's not very and he shouldn't be known for his death he should be known for people should not be thinking about oh he died because of this but he lived for his philosophies he, we have his teachings and i think to me his teachings are just as important as his films yeah definitely yeah. so he's i mean we lost a lot through the stuff that's not just... I mean, that's what I love about being able to find all these interviews now with YouTube and with documentaries that they stick on Blu-rays, <laughs> is that we can, and DVDs, we can get all this other stuff to, uh, that's, you know, there's more than just the eight or nine hours worth of film we got of him. And, you know, yeah. I mean, Ooh. that's the great thing about DVD and Blu-ray right now, isn't it? You can, you can attach all the, the making of. To, I mean, I remember back in the day, you used to get an extra tape with the making of. There was one, <laughs> or it'd be right at the end. So, yeah, I mean, if there's one person that needs to be mined constantly for information, it's Bruce Lee. I mean, it's just, his life and his story is fascinating, and it always will be fascinating. I think it's, you know... It, 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 it's, 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 it's teaching, it is, yeah. and and if it can, you know, if it can help you, 
uh, be a better person or, or you could take something a positive message and that's it I mean a lot of his stuff can be put into to life itself I mean not the whole not this the, the, the base story of the films in, in like revenge and stuff like that it's, it's the stuff that's hidden which when you look into it and you research it which you do find it's he was one of a kind yeah, definitely. I did. I just, I just, I saw a little bit of a note which I was going to open the first one with, and you know when when you when we decided last week that we were going to do a, a bit of a Bruce Lee, uh, before yeah. it blew up to being a two part. Uh, on the paid job, I went around and asked a few people. I did. I said, you know, I just said straight question for you. First thing that I say, I'm going to say a name. You say what comes into your head first thing. So this is I said Bruce Lee. The most common ones were people who just think of him for Kung Fu or Enter the Dragon. But I did, uh, I had one person actually said, and I actually really liked it, it was the Be Like Water quote. You know, he's famous for Be Like oh, Water. Yeah. So that is actually, that's the best one. Because if no matter what it is, no matter doc, what documentaries you get, you will always have the Be Like Water, Be Through It. And, you know, you can find that, and it's literally his most famous quote. And I, I thought it was kind of cool that of all the people I asked, only one person came up with the whole spiritual be like water thing. Yeah. So. Uh, but that sums him up, doesn't it? Yeah. Like that, that sort of above the world, like he's almost in a way like a god, you know, in, in the fact that he always stood apart from the world and saw it outside of martial arts and outside of everything. It's not just about fighting, it's, it's about like mindset. Yeah. And that's the great thing about Bruce Lee, I think, that a lot of other martial arts never tapped onto. It was a lot of them is, here's the script, here's the money, here's the Kung Fu, do your stuff. Whereas, yeah. whereas Bruce knew exactly what he was doing. He had what he, he, he had, he wanted to be, he wanted to be a movie star. He wanted to be a movie star. Yeah. He wanted to be a movie star in America. He wanted to put his philosophies across in his movies. And he knew everything about everything a person would do on the set. So he was able to put across everything he wanted to do. He was able to, I mean, going back to, again, Game of Death, is he was able to put across in his notes everything he wanted, that he wanted to do so that they could actually add it together for that last 20 minutes. Yeah. So every, everything is there. You know, I do want to read more of his teacher and uh, more of his teachings, especially after the last seven days doing the research and watching yeah. all the good stuff, which we haven't even. You go on YouTube, you'd be there for for months, literally mining through different material. Yeah, there's loads, isn't there? I mean, I I dare say there's probably whole channels dedicated to him as well. There is. It really is. Because yeah. <laughs> you look at it, and it's like Bruce Lee fighting channel. But, uh, it's, even just this sparring footage, you know, is fascinating to watch. Just the real life stuff happening, rather than, you know, as much as it's all authentic on the film, it's still edited and, you know, stuff like that. So it's good to see the real guy fighting, you know, as he fights. I, I think that's, yeah, like I could spend hours. I uh, sat down because we, we, I ordered uh, Enter the Dragon. Just so that I could actually watch it, and uh, yeah. I wanted to immerse myself with that film. Then I looked at all the extra features, and I literally started working my way through all the extra features. And I was like, "Wow, this is just." It gets to the point where you say, "I'm going to sit there and I'm going to enjoy this movie." Then it's like, "I'm going to sit there and enjoy this movie with my notepad." And yeah. it's 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 been a real this. This podcast has been educational and fun for me to actually yeah. do the research and actually watch it. And I mean, I know I say this about a lot of uh, of the work we do, but but this one, I I mean, it's 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 been a bit of a game changer. I think this is our first double two parter, really. For a while, yeah, yeah. and I, it's just yeah, I I've, I've had so much fun researching it and. Like when you get to look into someone like Bruce Lee, it's not—it's never going to be boring, is it? Um, he's—he's he's the man, isn't he? <laughs> uh, it's, it, yeah, he—he—he's—he's he's brilliant. He is, and if, if 
if you've only ever thought about uh, watching Bruce Lee films and you're now interested after, what, after listening to two podcasts, uh, sorry we get spoilers, but we did warn you and go and check his work out and, and, and yeah. look into him as a person because you won't be disappointed. So, uh, yeah. Uh, any thoughts, last thoughts? Just taking too young, I think. Like, it's so, it's, he has an amazing life story and a tragic one at the same time. And it's a, it's, it's a shame that we never got to see all those potential film projects and collaborations and directing jobs. You know, it's just, it's so sad. And it really does, it, you know, he's one of two people that I really wish were alive today. You know, the other being Freddie Mercury. And I just, it's so, it's almost, you know, like Heath Ledger, like we never got to see what he could have done after the Joker. And it's the same sort of thing. Like it, we never got to see anything else past the end of the dragon. I mean, officially. So yeah, it's just, I mean, it's sad and, and happy at the same time, like, cause we still have his body of work at least. He has, he has, he has, a, he, he, he has a great legacy. Yeah. And you know, is is what we have is quality. It's not like he, he, I mean, of the four films, I'm not clowning in Game of Death. Of the four films we have, we all, there's not one dud amongst them. And no. I mean, I, I feel exactly what you, what you what you're saying. I feel exactly the same like that about uh, about Brandon and, and how the cinematic landscape, of, you know, would have been. I mean, Bruce and Brandon. If they both lived, there was there the Hollywood would not be able to. I think would not be the same. There'd be some actors that wouldn't be having the roles that they have because Bruce or Brandon would have had them because of their immense talent. Yeah, but we've still and got. As a coder, I would say the one set of films that really channels Bruce Lee of modern times is the raid and the raid two if if you haven't seen them like it's just they're the best action films i've seen in a long time and it's the face the pace and the ferocity of bruce lee that no one else has ever seemed to manage and i just if you haven't seen them like check them out they're great i haven't seen them but i will check them out now they are See, they're, I'm they're, they remind me the most of bruce actually so the fighting scenes definitely so uh I, yeah, I, I really can't add any more than that. No, 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 just legend. Yeah. That's all there is. I'm Stevie W. And Callum. See you soon.